Hi everyone, I'm Alex Hamer, a technical artist intern at SideFX, and this is a continuation of creating editor utility widgets with the Houdini Public API. In the last video, we learned how to set up an editor utility widget, what they are and why they're useful, and also set up a system to control the Houdini session. Next, we're going to deal with instantiation and Houdini wrappers. So instantiation, if you're unaware, is essentially spawning a HDA within the scene. And we can then start to change parameters or cool functionality on it once we've done this. Firstly, let's set up some quick overhead to make this user friendly for our artist. We want to create a widget which allows us to set which Houdini asset we instantiate. Firstly, let's create a new variable with type of Houdini asset and make sure you keep note of the name of the variable as I'll explain why this is important in a second. So if we head to the designer and look under editor and drag in a single property view, single property view is a widget which displays nearly all types of variables and I'll get into which variables aren't supported and how to work around this in a little bit. So a single property will look like any normal variable in a details panel, for example. So let's set our property name to be the exact same name as our variable, so Houdini asset. We can then also set a name override if we want to, if the internal name is not something you want the artist to see. But this doesn't complete the job. You'll notice that it hasn't updated, and also if we run the utility widget, it says unknown property. This is because for every single property widget, we need to actually give it a reference to itself as currently it doesn't know which Houdini asset it's getting. So I'm going to create a new function for constructing the properties. We'll then get our single property widget. And it's vital that we set it as a variable first in the designer so that we can actually call events on it. Once that's done, we'll call set object and set the new object to be a reference to itself, which is actually a reference to the whole widget. Then if we head back to the designer, you can see that it has updated. As well as this, if we run the utility widget, we can then actually start changing the parameter. So it's very important to note that editor utility widgets are not fully ready for production. There are some things that you should be aware of. This is of course that there are bugs occasionally and sometimes things might not work like you expect them to. So I would advised to save often. Also, single property view is a fairly broken widget. If you try to set it to display a rotator variable and then compile, your engine will instantly crash. If you happen to save before you press compile, you will save your widget in this broken state, meaning that anytime you click on it, your engine will crash, or even sometimes if you enter the folder that this widget is in, then your engine will crash you will have essentially locked yourself out of your widget and potentially your project and will lose all your progress. So please be careful with rotators and just use a vector instead. Keep in mind that this may now have been fixed, but as of the time of the recording, this is still an issue. So now we have a display option where we can set which Houdini asset will actually instantiate. I'm going to do the same for a location and an auto cook toggle in case we don't want the HDA to cook as soon as we instantiate. Then I'm going to create a button for instantiating and then I'm going to head to the event where it's called. I'm actually going to connect this button to a new event. This is a script which will run our setup. However, I want it to be separate from the button as then I can call it in other places. Firstly, I want to check if the Houdini session exists. And if not, then we can create one before instantiating. This just means that our button and event will still function if the Houdini session isn't already active. So how do we get our Houdini asset in the scene? Well, we use the public API to call a function called instantiate asset. We can input our Houdini asset reference from the single property. 
and do the same for our location and auto cook. There are a lot of options in this function to give you a lot of choice over how your asset will act. So this is an area you may want to take a look at in case you want to have your HDA act in a certain way. This function also gives us a return value of an API asset wrapper. And this is a word you'll see a lot. A wrapper is essentially how we manipulate a HTA, such as setting inputs, parameters, and variables, etc. So I can promote it to a variable for easy access. And we can then also get the Houdini asset actor from this and promote it as well. So to break down the new phrases that we've just learned, our Houdini asset is our HDA exported from Houdini. Our HDA wrapper is our handle to manipulate the HDA within the scene. And our HDA actor is our reference to the actor in the scene that has our Houdini component. After this, we can also bind many events to our wrapper. So if we pull up a list by dragging out from the wrapper and searching for bind, we can see that we have many delegates to choose from. Some of these we can use to activate an event every time we change a parameter, and others are more specific to tasks such as baking meshes or using a top net. We can also use them to set up initial inputs and parameters we want to have. In the next video, we'll cover how to set up inputs using these events. Thanks for watching.